Being wealthy is healthy, but wealth is not about having a lot of money. It's about having a lot of options. What's good, everybody? It's Vaughn, and you know, this is where you get that knowledge that you don't get in college. So go ahead and scroll into the description, click the link next to Weibo, and collect your 12 free stocks. Before we get started, do y'all see this view? Because the views over here going to make you want to stare. But now that y'all see this view, I got to make it do what it do. Being broke is temporary and being poor is a state of mind. And if you can't see that, it's because you're blind. Because what's on my mind is going to allow me to commit to my grind. And as long as I continue to grind, I'm destined to shine. And if you're watching this, it's probably a sign you need to stop wasting your time if you want to conceive the things you believe you should achieve. I'm sure you've heard that real is rare and fake is everywhere. And if you agree with that, then you can't dispute that rich is rare and poor begins with what's in here. Productivity stems from creativity, but when an individual confines himself to his environment and operates with a scarcity mindset, he's incapable of conceiving a better life due to the fact that thoughts become things and you bring about the things that you think about. So if an individual is constantly conceptualizing negative results, that's exactly what will come about in his life. If you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And the first problem that poor people have when it comes to money is the way that they view it. They think that it's everything and they don't realize that it's a fiat currency that has no intrinsic value. But yet they're willing to kill and destroy in exchange for a little piece of change that doesn't even change the situation that they're in because they're living a life of sin. Business owners are here to create a better tomorrow, so they have to make a sacrifice and roll the dice and they're willing to pay the price. I know there's some of you that say you want to be a boss, but if you really want to be a boss, you're going to have to learn how to take a loss and pay what it costs. But patience is a virtue and the lack of it will hurt you. And peons have no patience. When I started out here in Jamaica, this platform that I'm standing on right now was non-existent and I came here on a mission. But if I had decided to give up, I would not be able to experience this view. And this beautiful view was created for me and you. So when you commit to a process, you have to be patient, persistent and positive so that you can reap the benefits of the seeds that you're sowing. And you might be wondering, how does this platform benefit me? Well, this platform is going to help stimulate the economy. With the stimulated economy, it's going to increase the value of the property that I'm building as well. So as the economy continues to grow, the dividends will definitely show. And you have to understand that human capital is a nation's number one asset. The power is within the people. If there was no value within your culture, there wouldn't be so much vultures. When I hear about Jamaica, they say it's beautiful. I mean, just look at it. You can't do nothing but stop and stare. They love the food. You gotta have the jerk before you go to work. And they love the culture. Yes, man! Original, diggity, that's me hailing out of the USPI, St. Thomas, St. Croix, and St. John. All original USPI, that man start the gunshot. Pick up all of me to me, and your uncle Kai, me love the rhythm. Make your part one, see part two here. You ready? Me love the coconut water with we white rum. Reggae music at the boom until the morning sun. Raise a nephew with a poor love in a jam down. Mackerel green banana. But one of the problems with my people is that there's too much malice and they don't want to work together in order to build a palace. The Jewish people have always had a peculiar relationship with money. Their Torah recounts tales of men accumulating fortunes of biblical proportions. When God took his people out of Egypt, he brought them to the foot of Mount Sinai and revealed to them many secrets, one of which was the secret to wealth. Throughout the ages, the world could not help but admire the Jewish people for their business prowess. Admittedly, in some generations, the admiration turned into hatred and became an exercise to commit unspeakable atrocities. Their greatest critics will say they control the banks, the media, and the financial markets. Is it all just a coincidence? There's no denying that this ancient people possess a secret to the accumulation of riches. This has defied 
the rule of nature. Well, what is this great secret? There's a lot of Jamaica families that own land and they themselves do not understand how much real wealth they have. Land has intrinsic value and Jamaica over the course of the next few years, there's a lot in store. This is just the beginning. He who owns the most land wins. There's a lot of Jamaican families that own land, but they don't have a plan. And a lot of these boys don't want to be a man. And ladies like the men that are in La La Land with no plan. You know, it's interesting that poor people beg while wealthy people borrow. You see the difference? On one side, you have no intention of returning the funds to the person that gave them to you. On the other side, you're willing to return the funds with interest so that both parties win because they understand the benefits of reciprocating energy. Poor people like to take, 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 but there's very far and few that are willing to give. And that's just how they live. And this creates a huge disparity for those that choose to donate to charity. And it's simply because they don't understand that relationships are more valuable than money. People can do a lot more for you than a dollar or two. And I've realized that peons have no problem with burning bridges because they don't know the difference between instant gratification and delayed gratification. And that's simply because they live day by day and they're not focused on the future plays. And they tend to be deceptive and not receptive. While they're living a lie, they wonder why things don't tend to work out in their favor. But nature doesn't nurture fabrication. If you want something to last for a lifetime, it has to be built on a stable foundation. Because if it's built on lies, then it's just a disguise. And when the cookie crumbles, your entire fortune will tumble. A shaky ground may seem profound, but a stable foundation, oh, that's where dreams are found. In their mind, tomorrow isn't promised. But are you sure? because I'm pretty sure that tomorrow is going to come with or without you. But the problem is that they think they need to get what they can get before they go. And they don't understand that if they invest in fertile soil, it will continue to grow after they go. And the future generations will be able to reap the benefits. And that's why wealthy people are huge advocates of delayed gratification, because they understand that great things take time. And a fence that goes up fast comes down even quicker. Instant gratification is for the peons without a purpose that lack patience. Just remember, the fact that we exist makes us wealthy, but our reality is a reflection of the decisions that we've made throughout our lives. And it's about that time. So if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. If you like this video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and click the bell so that you're notified every time I make a new post. Until next time. And don't forget to build a foundation so that you're no longer stuck on a plantation.